So a lot happened in the last video. We started with the representation of the group SU2 on a complex vector space V. We passed to the level of Lie algebras and we got R star going from little SU2 to little GLV. Then just for convenience, we allowed ourselves to take complex linear combinations of little SU2. So we ended up with a complex linear Lie algebra homomorphism from SL2C to GL, little glv. And then I claimed that we can say something about how the basis elements of little sl2c act. So there was, if you remember, the basis of little sl2c as a complex vector space we were using was uh, h, which is 1, 0, 0, minus 1, x, which is uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and y, which is 0, 0, 1, 0. And I told you something about how these guys act. So the outcome was V splits as a direct sum of spaces WM, where um, WM is the set of vectors V in V such that um, R star H. This should really have a, a C there, but I'm missing it out most of the time. Uh, v equals M V. In other words, it's the W M is the M eigenspace of R star H. I'm just going to get rid of this sub superscript C. It's cluttering up the notation. And then I told you that R star X sends W M to W M plus two, and R star Y sends W M to W M minus two. Okay, that was the outcome of last time's uh, video. So in this video, I want to work this out in an example, our favorite example, SIM2 of the standard representation. Um, but before I do that, I need to tell you how the Lie algebra acts on SIM2. So what I've told you so far is how the Lie group acts. So remember that RG if I apply it to um, a tensor power, like let's let's say we take the second tensor power of, of RG and we allow that to act on some vectors V1 tensor V2. The way we define tensor powers representations, uh, this is just RG of V1 tensor RG of V2. That's how we were defining tensor powers. But what is the Lie algebra representation corresponding to this? In other words, what is our tensor power 2 star? I need to answer that question before I figure out how, you know, the Lie algebra acts on SIM2 of the standard representation. So here's what I claim. It's slightly non obvious. So the claim is that our tensor to the power n star. If I apply that to an element of the Lie algebra X and I let that act on a tensor V1 up to Vn, I don't just stick R star X into each of these and tensor them together now. I basically apply the product rule. So I get R star X of V1, tensor V2, tensor up to Vn. So R star X just hits the first entry, then it hits the second entry. So I get V1 tensor R star X V2, tensor dot 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 tensor Vn. And then at the end I get, uh, so this is dot dot dot, um, V1 tensor V2, tensor dot dot dot, tensor R star X Vn. Okay, so it's not completely obvious why this is the right uh, Lie algebra homomorphism. Um, so what I'm going to do first is assume this is correct, work out the example, and then come back and justify this claim. So let's let's do the example. So the example is sim two c two. This has a basis e one squared, e one e two e2 squared, where these are shorthand for like e1 tensor e1, uh, e1 tensor e2 plus e2 tensor e1, 
and E2 tends to E2. But I'm just going to write them as polynomials because uh, it's quicker than writing out all of this. OK, how do the Lie algebra elements act on E1 and E2? Well, you know, it's the standard representation. So H is this matrix 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So it sends E1, which is the basis vector 1, 0, to 1, 0. So it goes to E1. And E2 is the base vector 0, 1. So that goes to minus E2. Similarly, X is... Um, 0, 1, 0, 0. So that sends E1 to the first column, which is nothing. And E2 goes to the second column, which is E1. And Y is this matrix 0, 0, 1, 0. That's going to send E1 to E2 and E2 to 0. Okay, so this is just by definition of the standard representation. That's a, that's a two. This is just by definition of the standard representation. So the question is, how do we figure out the SIM2 representation? Uh, well, let's see. SIM2H, I'm going to write it like this. This is H acting in this representation, SIM2C2. Two. Uh, this is going to take E1 tends to E1 and Let's look at the formula. It's going to act on E1 and leave the second tensor alone. And then it's going to leave the first tensor alone and act on the second one. So we're going to get H E1 tensor E1 plus E1 tensor H E1. Well, H E1 is E1. So I end up with 2 E1 tensor E1. In other words, E1 squared. Oh, sorry, 2 E1 squared. Similarly, you can calculate sim2 h e1 e2. So let's, I'm not going to write this out uh, in this way anymore. I'm going to stick to the sort of polynomial notation. So this is going to be h e1 e2 plus e1 h e2. All right, h e1 is um, e1, so I get e1 e2. And H E2 is minus E2, so I get minus E1, E2. So they cancel and I get zero. Sim 2 H E1, E2 squared. Similarly, is going to be minus 2 E2 squared. So you can see what the weight spaces are here. Remember the weight spaces W, M going up here are the eigenspaces of H with eigenvalue being M. So here, E1 squared is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 2. E1, E2 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 0. And E2 squared is an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 2. So we get this picture that I've drawn before. Weight space, weight 2, weight 0, weight minus 2. And these are spanned by E1 squared, E1, E2, and E2 squared, respectively. OK. OK, what about x? So let's compute sim to x acting on e1 squared. That's x e1 tensor e1 plus e1 tensor x e1. Going up, e1 goes to 0 under x because the first column is 0, 0. So this is just 0. Sim to x e1 e2 is x e1 times e2 plus e1 times x e2. Well, the x e1 is 0. x e2 is e1, so I get e1 squared. Because if I go back up, x e2 is e1. And sim to x e2 squared. Well, x hits e2, and then I get an e2. And then I get e2, x, e2. So this is again 2, e1, e2. Notice that, um, so x, e2 is e1, 
So this first term makes sense. In the second term, I get E2, E1, but this is a symmetric power. So it's symmetric in E and E1 and E2. That's why I get the same thing in both terms here. Okay, so we can now draw on our diagram with dots what X is doing. It's taking E2 squared to 2 E1, E2. In other words, it's moving this weight space W minus 2 over to W0 with some factor, factor of 2. That factor will become important, but for now, it's not so important. It takes W0, which is spanned by E1, E2, and it moves it to E1 squared, which is in W2. So X is moving things to the right. And then if I apply it to E1 squared, which is in W2, I get zero. That's because I fall off the end of the weight space decomposition. There's nothing else further to the right. So the weight space W4 is just zero, but I have to land in it, so I have to be zero. The y's you can calculate, uh, I'll leave that as an exercise to calculate sim 2y, but you will see that they end up moving things to the left like this, and eventually you fall off the end and you get zero. And the h's, as I drew earlier, preserve each weight space. Let's just go back up and have a look. All right, so sim 2h of e1 squared is 2 e1 squared, preserves w2. If I apply it to e1, e2, I get zero, so it preserves w0. And if I apply it to e2 squared, I get minus 2 e2 squared, so it preserves w minus 2. Okay, so that's just an example of this in practice. Now I just need to justify this claim that I made that the tensor power of R induces a Lie algebra representation which is basically given by the product rule. So I'll justify that now. Okay, well, how do I get at something like this? I need to use this formula that I had that R tensor N G applied to, uh, well, actually, let's not apply it to anything. Let's let's take G to be uh, X T X. So X is not the X from earlier on. X is just any elements of the algebra. So R tensor N X T X equals X T R tensor N star X. This is by our usual formula for Lie group and Lie algebra representations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand both sides in terms of t. So the right hand side is the identity plus t times r tensor n star x plus things of order t squared. And the right hand side I'm going to write out by applying it to some v1 up to vn and then compare the, the terms of order t on both sides. Okay, so apply to a tensor V1 up to Vn. On the left hand side, I get R X Tx V1 tensor dot 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 tensor R X Tx Vn by definition of the tensor power representation. Um, and on the right hand side, I'm going to get what well, the identity just gives me V1 tensor dot 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 tensor vn and then I get the thing I want which is t times r tensor n of x sorry star of x applied to v1 tensor up to vn plus stuff of higher order so this order t term is what I'm interested in so let's expand each of these guys Right, so R of X T X is X of T R star X. And now I can expand this exponential. I get identity plus T R star X plus dot 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 applied to V1 tensor 
stuff all the way up to identity plus t r star x plus stuff applied to vn. And now if I multiply out the brackets, what I get is, well, the identity terms are just going to give me v1 tensor up to vn, which agrees with this first term here. The order t part, which is what I'm interested in, well, I'll get an order t part doing r star x v1, and then doing nothing in the other guys, just taking the identity and the other factors. So tensor v2 up to vn. Plus another one coming from where r t, uh, uh, t r star x hits v2. So I'm gonna get v1 tensor r star x v2 tensor stuff up to vn. And finally, I get v1 tensor v2 tensor dot dot dot, dot up to r star x vn. Put some brackets in. Okay, and then there's higher order stuff in T. So by comparing the first order terms, oops, I get exactly the formula I wanted for R tensor N star X. So this proves the claim.